Hi there, this is Simon. Welcome to this video where we're going to download KeyPass password safe password management software in addition to installing it, both of which are very easy to do. To find the download file, you can actually type in keypass.info. That will take you to the homepage for the KeyPass password safe software. Don't be confused by the different software versions. This higher version, 2.04, is higher than the version we're going to install. This is an alpha release, which strictly means it's for testing purposes. I'm going to download KeyPass 1.10, and as you can see, it was released on January 12th, 2008. So once you've downloaded the software, let's go ahead and install it. Depending on which operating system you are using, you may get a security warning. I'm running Windows XP with Service Pack 2, and I'm going to ignore this warning since I know who the publisher is. Choose your language. Of course, I'm going to choose English. Click on Next. Accept the license agreement after you read it. Click Next. Choose an installation file path. I'm going to leave the default. If you like, you can create a Start Menu folder. Next. This option may throw some of you off. Most of you will be okay to leave this checked. Associate key pass with a KDB file extension. Of course, key pass will use a KDB file. There are other applications out there that will use this kind of file extension. So even if you leave this unchecked, your key pass software will still work. And if you like, you can create a desktop icon or a quick launch icon. I'm gonna choose a desktop icon. Click next, click install. You see it's a very fast install. If you like, there are plugins available you can install with the software. I'm not going to do that right now. We can visit that at a later time. And you can also launch KeyPass if you like. We'll do that shortly. And of course, the last thing you'd like to do is finish. So now that we have the KeyPass software installed, the next video will go through and set up our KDB file or our database file. So now that we've installed the software, let's go ahead and launch the software for the first time and create our first password database. So I'm gonna launch KeyPass and you'll see there are some menus up here. This icon here allows you to create the new password database. The database of course is what tracks all of your passwords and the passwords that are associated with your websites or your Windows applications you're using. You can also launch a new database by clicking on new in the file menu. So let's click on a new database and create a new database. You'll see it's asking us for a master password. So at the very least, you are going to need a password to open up your password database each time. Of course, you should use the password rules for a strong password. A strong password is at least eight characters in length and a combination of uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters. Watch what happens when I just enter in ones all across. It doesn't matter how many characters I have, this remains red or orange, depending on how you <laughs> see the color. Watch what happens when I include numbers and characters and special characters. You'll see it'll start shifting from orange to yellow to eventually green. So that means it's a strong password. So what does this mean? A use master password in key file. What's really great about the software is that you can also, as extra protection, associate a file. So that means even if you enter your master password, there's additional file that you need to unlock your database. So it's an extra layer of security. And this is great because you could actually keep that file on, say, a USB drive or on your hard drive. It becomes dual factor authentication. So not only do you need your master password, you will need your key file to unlock the database. So for now, let's just go ahead and create a database without the key file and click OK. And of course, it's going to ask you to repeat your master password just in case we've typed it incorrectly or left our caps lock on and click OK. So that was it. Now we can start entering our passwords in the database. But before we do it, let's go revisit that and let's click a new Again, of course, it says the file has been modified. Do we want to save the changes? Let's click on yes. 
and you are going to save your KDB file, your database file, somewhere. So I'm going to put this in temp. I wouldn't recommend you do to do the same thing because usually temp means <laughs> it's meant to be there for temporary purposes. Let's click on save. And now, of course, we can create our second database. The reason why I want to do this is because I want to show you how to create a key file. So let's enter in our master password. And let's click on use a master password and key file. Now it's going to allow us to choose an area where we want to save that key file. And you may be wondering why is there a drop down arrow here? Well, if you have an existing key file, of course, you could use that. I don't have one, so let's click on this little diskette here. And I'm going to give it a file name of, say, key pass file one. Click Save, and then click OK. Once again, it will ask us to repeat our master password. Now this is interesting. It says get random data for key generation. So we actually have to input some information here to get that um, key file generated. So you can, of course, use your mouse and hold down your mouse, your left button here to scroll around. Of course, we have to use mouse as a random source or you can just type in letters here, random keyboard input. If you use the mouse as a random source, watch what happens. You gotta move around, move around, move around. Eventually when this is full, we can click OK. So let's go ahead and click OK. And once again, we actually have a new database file. Since it's a new one, let's go ahead and click Save As as well. And now we can give it a different name. Let's say database with key file. Click Save. So there you have it. To create a new database, very straightforward. So in the next video, we'll start entering some data into our database.